and welcome to King's Point Spotlight. I'm Lieutenant Tyrone Broxton, and on today's episode, I have the pleasure of being joined at Captain Toom Field in Brook Stadium with Ensign Garen Edgington. Ensign Edgington is a 2008 graduate of the United States Merchant Marine Academy, where he majored in Marine Transportation, Operations, and Technology. Edge, thanks for joining us here today on King's Point Spotlight. Good. Thank you for having me. Now, as I always like to do, especially with some of the younger graduates, let's shout out your hometown, your high school, let all the good people know where you're from. Uh, originally, I was uh, from Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, went to A.C. Reynolds High School, and uh, we were the 2002 state champions of North Carolina, by the okay. way. <laughs> and uh, now I live in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. We moved from the academy for almost two years now, just about, as graduation's coming up, so we're almost two years out of here. Uh, you chose to work in the maritime industry, which is great. Um, where did you land professionally, uh, leaving the academy, and what is your role with your company? I landed uh, in the drilling, the drilling industry, uh, the oil field, and uh, the company I work with is uh, Transocean. Okay. And I am a, what's called a dynamic positioning operator. Okay. And my basic job is to monitor all the systems on the ship uh, and to keep the ship in one stationary location so we can conduct drilling operations. and. Uh, if you can imagine, you know, you drill in a in almost a mile of water, uh, you have to be over the spot that you're drilling in the seafloor. So my job is to keep it in that spot while maintaining the safety and integrity of the ship. Oh, very good. So that's, that's really incredible. Really incredible. Now, how did you? What was it about Transocean um, mm -hmm. that said this is a job that I want to do? Uh, well, uh, looking around, and you know, of course, I spent my seven months at sea and. Uh, kind of didn't, didn't that didn't feel right to me I, I didn't I didn't like going to sea for long periods of time and uh, I looked at tug the tug industry and uh, the schedule there was you know two weeks on two weeks off and the Transocean it was three weeks on three weeks off so a big part of that was a schedule you know not a lot of time from home and uh, it was a place where I also could advance my license to a limited ton I could become a limited ton master and uh, it's something that I wanted to do now how did you discover Kings Point? What schools were you looking at? Mm -hmm. In addition to Kings Point, why did you apply to Kings Point okay. and then accept your appointment? Okay. Uh, when I, I discovered Kings Point, I uh, by I applied to all the military academies. Uh, I knew I wanted to be being I wanted to go to a, a federal service academy, and uh, so while applying to all these different academies, I learned about them and uh, kind of what each one was about. And I heard from I heard about the Merchant Marine Academy from Senator Dole, and uh, she gave me my nomination. And uh, we decided after talk, talking with her and her staff that this would be the best fit for me. Okay. And uh, there you have it. There you have it. Yeah. Now, the football. Where did football come into play? Football came into play as kind of an after effect. Uh, it was I was when I first applied here and. Uh, decided to come to Kings Point. My, my intention was totally to go active duty and um, spending my four years here uh, shifted my what I wanted to do with my life and uh, but football was an after afterthought. It was uh, not not to say I don't love football. That was uh, something I definitely wherever I go I was going to play um, but it was an afterthought. It okay. was just hey I'm here I'm going to play football. In terms of the academics three of your four years are primarily in a classroom in a laboratory setting one of those years is actually out to sea, all in preparation for the United States Coast Guard license exam. When you passed that exam, what was that feeling like for you? Oh, great! A great amount of relief. Uh, obviously, uh, you spend uh, countless hours studying. I know uh, the whole week before the exam, you're you're studying at least 12 hours a day. Um, I would say that was the minimum uh, for most most people, uh, at least for me, anyways. Uh, and you know, up until that, you have a whole semester of license preparation classes, and uh, just you're always getting pounded, asking questions, doing this, you know, constantly, constantly scrutinized. So once you, once you go and you, you know, read your your name across that line and it says you know passed or oh, it's a great, great, it's a great sound of relief. And you you know, I, it's something that you just have to experience. Uh, it's uh, it's the culmination of uh, so much hard work and. That's your, you know, that's your victory right there. Yes. Uh, I know all the parents and everyone up comes up for graduation and all that, but uh, 
that as far as my feelings were, that was my graduation. I got you. When when that happened, that was for me. And then what about the bell ring ceremony? Oh, oh, it's great. <laughs> it's great. You know, you run down there and you, you know, you're on the phone with your parents or you're calling whoever, and you know, you ring that bell, and it's, it's a great feeling. Very good. So good, good. Now, from a senior standpoint, mm -hmm. I'm I'm assuming you travel to multiple spots. Where are some of the places that you went, mm -hmm. and what type of ships did you work aboard? Uh, well, I worked on the MV Mokihana, which is a container ship. I worked on the Horizon Producer, which was a container ship. And I worked on the USNS Tip Canoe, which was a, um, basically it's a Navy tanker. It's a, that we did unwraps, uh, underway replenishments uh, with um, basically fuel oil to transfer to other Navy ships. Uh, as far as where I went on the Mokihana, I went to um, uh, up and down the West Coast, including uh, Guam, um, like Nagoya, Yokohama, uh, Okinawa, uh, in Japan I went to uh, Zingang, Tianjin, uh, uh, and uh, that was the run with the Mokihana. On the tip of canoe, I went everywhere. I went to uh, Bahrain, Dubai, I went to more places in China, I went to Hong Kong, um, I hit Okinawa again, uh, I went to Singapore, Malaysia, uh, went to the Philippines, Suba Bay, uh, headed to Diego Garcia, but then after we crossed the, uh, the the equator, we turned around and came back for it's the Navy. You know, what are you going to do? And then uh, Horizon Producer, I did an East Coast run, uh, New York, Jacksonville, Florida, and down to Puerto Rico. So. And you went everywhere. I, I went great. I did everything uh, but, but Europe, so I'm doing that on my time. People ask you about your season, they ask, you know, did you win Coast Guard? They don't ask you what your, what, what your record was. It's always just like, did you beat Coast Guard? And uh, so if you can imagine, you know, that it does, it does play a big factor in how people perceive your, how your season went. Uh, I don't know if that's a good or positive thing, but it's just, you know, it's a fact. Hey, same with Navy and Army. Yeah. Same thing. And uh, it definitely means a lot. You, you get a little amped up more so for that game for whatever reason. Uh, I think it's great playing at Coast Guard. Uh, just the, the stadium they have, everyone's in, they're in on you. And you can you can just feel the crowd rumble. So and the midshipmen and um, are right there. So it's definitely a great great atmosphere to be in. Uh, so I mean it, it definitely means a lot just as because uh, it's such a long standing rivalry to be like yeah we beat you you know this is this is, this is our year yes so it's a uh, it's a unique experience also awesome. now last but not least why would you tell any future perspectives, any future football recruits that they should come to the United States Merchant Marine Academy and maybe bypass another academy or uh, ROTC, ROTC scholarship, whatever the case may be? Uh, my biggest thing was, uh, just for an example, was I was dead set going Marine Corps. It's what I want to do with my life. Uh, I graduated high school and uh, I, you know, young 18 year old, you know, I was just like, I want to go to war. You know, I want to go over to Afghanistan, wherever. And uh, I want to go fight. You know, this is something I wanted to do, um, not knowing a lot about it. Uh, and when you when you come to the Merchant Marine Academy, you have so many options. You know, you can still go do that if that's your goal, if that's what you want to do. Uh, you also have the option of going reserve and uh, serving in that aspect. And you know, being a civilian, um, it also gives those those um, individuals who maybe don't want to don't want to serve in an active duty uh, role, but don't really know where they want to go in life. I know when I graduated high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do for a career. I had no clue. I mean, I know I wanted to go Marine Corps, but I didn't know if I wanted to do that my whole life. Uh, I didn't know what I you know, wanted to do as a, as, a, as a young man. I didn't know what I wanted to do as a person. And you know, this place gives you uh, direction without locking you in. And you come here and they're just like, hey, these are the classes that you're gonna take. This is the direction you have here. You can pick, and uh, so it provides you a lot of options without locking you down, and uh, it pushes you in a direction, and it's a very successful direction, obviously, as everyone knows. Ensign Garen Edmonton, always a pleasure. Thanks Thank for being you. with us here today. Thank you. And that concludes this edition of Kings Point Spotlight. For all of us in admissions, I'm Lieutenant Tyrone Broxton. Until next time, acting on verbal and go Mariners. <laughs>